looking yes looking <laughs> so it was just that yeah that one yeah that's it this is previously unbroadcast footage of the late British painter Lucian Freud, who was famously wary of cameras. He's pursuing the routine that he followed almost every day for the last 20 years of his life, working in his studio in West London with his loyal assistant and sometimes sitter, David Dawson. Come in. Here's the studio. This is the day. Day studio. Freud left Dawson his house and the studio. Day here, night there. Or rather studios adjacent to each other. One for day work, the other for night. And Dawson's kept them just as they were in Freud's paintings and his own photographs when they were busy here and later relaxed to the music of Johnny Cash. I keep a close watch on this heart of mine. I keep my eyes wide open all the time. I keep... What was going on there then? Was that a, a, a rage, a frustration? No. <laughs> I, I, I noticed there are actually some scissors in bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now. So Lucian would cut his paintbrushes, he would trim them. So he'd trim these as he painted with, and put the scissors there. So you don't... He didn't like them too long and... Yeah, exactly. But the paint on the walls is that from his palette, he would scrape the palette and just put it there. Why would he do that? So he'd slightly try and keep the floor clean. The studio's barely been seen by outsiders since the artist's death. They became very much part of his landscape in his painting. The invariable backdrop of his portraits, it's a subject in its own right in Freud's works. There'd be messages that I would always keep an eye out for, so like Terps is running low, or Terps of the National Gallery. At least in the, when he's painting and I'm not here, he would just write them on the walls and he wouldn't, so he wouldn't forget. forget. Yeah. And then I'd just keep an eye out, so we'd always intuitively... It's like a sort of cave message. Cave message, exactly that. Parker Bowles' uniform, uh, lamp grey, Red oxide, Naples yellow, pale, Payne's grey. So ah, it's those, are, those are the, the paints. paints that I would so need. That, that's a note to you to yeah, get out be, and yeah, buy. Yeah, get right. those, yeah. Andrew Parker Bowles was a great friend, the brigadier at the cavalry in Knightsbridge. Andrew used to be really nervous because Andrew would take Leeson riding on the, in the early morning in the in Hyde Park. And he, Leeson just wanted to gallop flat out. Without a helmet. Without a helmet. And Andrew was there going, oh God, don't fall off. <laughs> yeah, please let me not kill Britain's greatest, <laughs> greatest living painter. Exactly. David Dawson's an artist and photographer himself, but put his career on hold to work with Freud. He's now edited a monumental retrospective of his work. This is Lucian's a shadow of Lucian's head. He was extremely strong on his edit, and he'd, you know, because he was great friends with Francis Bacon, and there was that time in the later in Francis's life when people were going through his dustbins and stuff and finding, you know, stuff that Francis had already rejected but pulling them out and so Leeson was really, really tough on his own. He only wanted his paintings to exist that he felt were good enough. So if anything was slightly not quite, he would, he, yeah, he would put the boot in. And that was part of my job was to edit with him. I would cut, physically cut everything up. Did you ever try and dissuade him from destroying a canvas he wasn't keen on? A little bit. I was thinking that, and one I would I just say, are you sure? Yes. Right, do it. Were you ever involved in putting a bet on for Lucian? Yes, a few times. I'd walk up to the bookies in Notting Hill, thinking, yikes. <laughs> What's a fiver here, oh, a tenner a bit more there? Than that. I'll put a few more noughts on the end How of that. How many? Five more noughts. Five noughts? Yeah. It was high risk, which is what he lived by high risk, losing everything, being fearless, not being scared of anything, coming back and making it, trying to make the best painting he ever could. Dawson often sat to Freud, once stepping in halfway through what was meant to be a painting of Jerry Hall breastfeeding after the supermodel went AWOL. I understood what it was he was doing. He really needed to get the painting finished. He just used my head to give it some life. What was it like to sit to Freud? I thought it was brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. And each painting he did was very large of me, so I could, so I could always see him paint, so I could watch every single mark he put down. Oh, good. That's fine. Which, I, for me as a painter, was 
extraordinary. And it, the thing with Lucian, he's an amazingly good company. He was really good fun to spend time with. Some critics have described his his gaze, as it were, as as cold, even cruel. Yeah, I don't agree with that really. It's Lucian trying his very, very hardest to find an empathy or ha have an empathy with the sitter and bring that um, sitter come to life, really. Like in the close-ups, I think, of some of the portraits, it's like you're sharing the same breath with the painting. And only the sitter would be in the room with Lucian. I, I'd, be, I'd be out the way. After his long years as Freud's assistant, model, emanuensis, and placer of bets, Dawson's making up for lost time in his own career, except that he doesn't consider it lost time at all. What he was doing was so remarkable that it was worth hanging around for. I really wanted to see what he was going to do next. And I just thought, no one is painting as good as this anywhere in the world. And it was sort of like the very heart of painting was in the room.